Welcome to Grace at the Fray, a podcast that explores the many dimensions of God's grace that we find at the frayed edges of life. Come explore how God's grace works to renew your life and send you on mission in His kingdom. Hello, beloved. Welcome to another episode of Grace at the Fray where we tell stories of how God's grace meets us at the frayed edges of life. So I have a question for you. What's your prayer life like? And you know, when someone asks you that, it's there's a part of you that cringes inside because, man, leave me alone. Uh, prayer is hard, and I don't need you to give me your guilt trip about how I stink at prayer. Well, well my hope for today is, is that after this podcast episode that your prayer life will be marked by freedom and joy, not by guilt and obligation. And speaking of freedom and joy, not obligation and guilt, I want to ask you to go to wherever you listen to podcasts and, and to leave a rating and because it, it really helps us get the podcast out for folks. And, and if you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button and subscribe and then click the little bell so that you can be notified when the next episode is out. And for more information, go to surge.org slash podcast. Now today, I want to take you to London. I took a trip there last December to visit Surge workers. And man, it was so much fun getting to know these folks who are doing some really beautiful work. Over the course of this season, I'll be taking you back to London. But for this episode, I want to introduce you to Matt and Jen. It was such a joy to hang out with them and, and hear their story. And due to the sensitive nature of the field where they serve, uh, we don't discuss the specifics of the work that's going on and where they're doing that work. Uh, But it kind of doesn't matter because the Christian life comes down to loving God and loving your neighbor wherever you are. So join us as we talk about how they are loving God and loving their neighbors and how the biggest, most glorious and beautiful things in life, well, they all start with prayer. Tell me, tell me who y'all are, and yeah, just a little bit of background. Um, do you want to sure, introduce well, us? Uh, sure. Uh, this is my husband, Matt, <laughs> and and I'm Jen. Uh, we've lived here together since 2001. So. And I first came at the yeah. end of 1996. So I was here for a few years before Jen, before we got married. Mm-hmm. So we both grew up in the states. So I'm from Pennsylvania, and Jen's from upstate New York. And, but we've been living here um, and serving uh, with Surge for 22 years together, 25 years for me. Yeah, so tell, tell me, when, when you and I had the conversation about, uh, you, know, you were at A&O the week that Jack was dying, but tell me some of tell me some stories about what it's been like to be with Surge. There's the ministry here that you know, and is the grassroots kind of thing. But there's something happening underneath that that is that's from the DNA of the of the company. So like, what is that? And 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 it's more than just what attracted you to 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 this company. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like how how has this being a part of this company affected uh, the way that you do the way that you do ministry over the last 22, yeah. 25 years. Yeah, I, I I first got connected to to Surge I w- um, when I was still in university. So my last um, summer in before my final year of university, I spent in Ireland, and Josiah and Hunter were there at that point. And I think, so one of the things that really, I think, grabbed me that summer was uh, yeah, an understanding of 
uh, a ministry that's flowing out of God's love and grace and mercy um, for us. And, and then also seeing uh, transparency in leadership, um, being honest about failures and uh, repenting and moving towards Jesus. And that was very wis- winsome for me to, to hear um, and to see. And you were, you were telling me about how Rosemary, you said Rosemary is just a good friend. And it seems like everyone, everyone in close proximity to her, uh, or when she's in close proximity to them, comes away with joy. Um, because of her humility. And it seems like everyone is saying, yeah, Rosemary taught me how to pray. So how has Rosemary taught you how to pray? That's a great question. You know, I think we, yeah, we've become friends. I think when I first, when I first moved here, newly married, 20 something, you know, I used to work uh, in the World Trade Center. I was kind of in a corporate job, you know, and then you have unstructured time. You're just supposed to go out and love the community. How do you do that? And Rosemary at that time, maybe she was 70 something. And there was another woman who was also her age. And they invited me to come to their house for breakfast at 630 in the morning before we opened the charity shop. And I had to drive an hour to get there. So it was like, it was a big commitment. But these ladies, they just had tea for us and breakfast. You know what? We would just read the Bible and share lives Honestly, they talked about some things that I wouldn't expect, (laughs) like, oh, I wasn't dressed well enough at that event, or, you know, something that I thought, oh, wait a minute, when I'm 65, I'm not going to, I thought, oh, I'll be more sanctified, I won't think about those things, but I thought, oh, they're more like me, you know, and I think she just has a lifestyle of prayer. We just would pray together, because we knew that we couldn't help each other, but Jesus could help us. So honestly, I think she... uh, She's like a soul sister, hmm. right? It really is where we um, encourage one another to pray together. And when we talk, we usually end in prayer. Or, you know, if we have a prayer need, we'll just bring each other up. And sometimes that's really wonderful. Hmm. She points you to Jesus. She points you not to yourself. She'll call you on your sin in a very kind way. Uh, if I get called out on sin, either I'll be like, oh, you have no idea. Or I'll be just overwhelmed by or embarrassed by. You know, but that's not the way that Jesus comes to us. There's this gentleness continually. We see, uh, let he who has the no sin cast the first stone. Do you see anyone to condemn you? Neither do I. You know, and so it sounds like that's the kind of posture that. Yeah, and you know, I think it has to be organic too. I think you really have to know someone else, right? It can't just be. Sometimes you can be uh, overly spiritual in the Christian realm, and everything seems like it's. Mm. fine or you know these are the certain words you're supposed to use but Mm -hmm. once you get into each other's lives and you can ask the deeper heart questions Mm. somehow rosemary has a great way of you know asking how's your heart yeah Mm. what's the what's going on underneath are you looking for people's approval you know you're you're meant to lead the bible study but you really care more about what people think than making sure that god's word is taught well um she really knows she really knows and loves jesus and his kingdom you know when she almost um passed away we got to see her in the hospital. And you know what? Through the oxygen mask, she was asking us, like, I'm not, I feel like God has more work for me to do. Mm-hmm. You know, would you just pray for me? And so that's really amazing that she wants her life to be lived to um, tell others about Christ and what he's done for her. Mm. She's like a dear, a dear sister. And also, I think people can put her up on a pedestal sometimes. Where, you know, if you get to know somebody and they're just a, 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 a normal person who loves Christ, that gives you freedom to be honest. She's always honest about what are her struggles. So I think that's helpful. That can be becoming. Yeah, there's, there's this strange propensity that we have to find someone who is very much like Jesus and think that the, and, ex, and expect that they be Jesus um, in unhealthy ways. I mean, I think that you come away from a conversation with Rosemary and, and it's like the spirit is there and you, it's, and it's beautiful and the joy of the Lord is there, you know, when you hang up the phone or when you part ways or whatever. But when I was talking to her, I said, 
I said, you're going to hate this question. But I said, why are you so amazing? <laughs> and, and, and it's like, she's like, oh, you know, and hemming and hawing. Um, because she understands who she is and who she is before the face of God. So she has this freedom from being self-preoccupied. So when someone says, hey, you're amazing, it's kind of disorienting because she hasn't really been thinking about that. She hasn't been trying to defend that, you know, which is me and my ego, you know. Mm. I'm trying to defend that. And she comes along and goes, hey, you do not have to defend, uh, you don't have to defend your ego, uh, not, when, not when the Lord loves you, you know, so... It's interesting you just said that, Jim, because I was thinking about, you'd asked about prayer and then connecting with Serge. And, and just in my mind, before you, before you just said that, I was, I was thinking the connection for me, I think, is you talk about kingdom-centered prayer, but you talk about grace and knowing that you are accepted based on the finished work of Jesus, that united with Jesus by faith, but you're united with, with, with Christ and you're welcomed into the presence of the Father. And, and so I think you know, in coming into Surge and doing ministry with Surge, I, uh, I tasted that you are welcomed in the presence of, of God. He, he, he's he's um, pleased to use a son like you. Um, but then... What are you going to do when you're in the presence of the king? You, you can be in the presence of the king because you're, you're free to be there. You're not worried about how you don't measure up. And, mm-hmm. and, and so you're free to be there. But then what are you going to do when you're there? You're going to care about what he cares about, which is his kingdom advancing. And how does that happen primarily through prayer? And so I think those two things kind of you know, got joined. I can remember when I first come, came to London having conversations with, with Bob. And I was essentially trying to, uh, even though I'd, I'd come because I love the ethos of grace and how that changes people and how that gives them a freedom to be honest and to fail. And um, I, I loved all that. Um, and that's what brought me here. But I was still kind of really trying to figure out, like, what does it look like to grow in Jesus, you know? And, uh, and so we, we talked about some of that, but re- re- really what I started to do is realize I got to focus less on worrying about my sanctification and just care about what Jesus cares and then, right. and then pray about that. That's right, um, yeah. Uh, and, and so then it was very natural to be in prayer meetings where uh, we're just like dreaming about how would we love to see this broken world changed? Like, and just telling Jesus about that for long chunks of time. Mm. Uh, and and like, kind of that gives you a, a chance to um, kind of be weak in that situation. Like, there's no way we can do all these things. We can't see um, the, the sort of brokenness of the world healed within our own strength, but because we're praying to the God that's got all these things in his hand and has invited us to come in and just talk to him about it, we can be really bold in these prayers. Uh, and, and so I can remember doing that for long chunks of time, and it was just a natural thing. Um, actually, a, a thought came to mind when I, after my first two years as an apprentice here, I, I came back and I was in a meeting when I was transferring to long term, and I, <laughs> it's just this crazy memory. I think Bob Osborne was just visiting the office, and there was some prayer meeting, and we were praying, and uh, and and I wasn't trying to to uh, put on airs to pray in a certain way. I was just uh-huh. praying the way we would be used to praying, and I remember him saying something afterwards, like, man, he really knows how to pray. And I just thought, that's such a weird thing. Like, what are you talking about? But I think then I, as I'm reflecting on that, it's because I was in an environment around people who were teaching me just by modeling how to pray. Mm-hmm. Um, as I've come into the organization, relatively new, trying to get a feel for, for things, we've been 
affiliated loosely. I have while Lori worked in in uh, the sending center uh, for a number of years. I've seen how, as a staff in the in in the sending center, we pray. We have prayer meetings twice a week, and and it's like everyone takes this seriously as it as if this is part of our job. Mm-hmm. You know, we this is one of the things that we do is we pray for everyone mm-hmm. who who's out there. And I've been so impressed um, because it's hard work. It's hard work. It's a discipline that you have to engage in. And there's the, it's just been this beautiful thing. And a lot of it has been over Zoom. And so there's boxes and boxes of people that I'm staring at. And we'll just take turns entering into the idea. And I like how you talked about this this idea of I'm just going to go before the Lord and dream kingdom things mm. in front of Him. Mm. Um, and there's something, there's something really glorious and beautiful about crawling up into your Father's arms and saying, this is what I hope you would do. This is what I would love for you to do. Mm. And it's all things that are good and beautiful yeah. and shalom and, uh, mm. and the victory of God over the powers and principalities of darkness. And so yeah. he's pleased for us to, at the very least, just yeah. dream in front of him. And I, and I think, I mean, some of the, the, the ways that it just feels naturally to, for me to pray, I think I've just absorbed them from other people that I've had the privilege of being mentored by and serving around. So, for example, the idea that you come in and say, look, I don't know how to pray. Lord, come teach me how to pray. Yeah. Like, um, that that's okay to start there. I mean, what an easy on-ramp to say, well, or, or even to say, I don't know how to pray. Teach me how to pray alongside with, I don't really want to be here. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, um, Lord, I'm a mess. Like, these are 10 things I've just said and done that I know in my own self I'm not worthy to be here, but thank you that I'm here because Jesus covers me. Um, and I can just start by telling you that all, you know, just talking to you about all the, my own junk and then, uh, uh, so I, I could teach me how to pray, and I don't really believe that this is going to change anything. <laughs> right. You know, all, all that just to kind of be be open about be my my lack of faith and and my sin, um, uh, and but then move beyond that and say, well, the gospel is that I'm not worthy, but Jesus has made me worthy, and um, and now He wants to invite me to pray about these things that we're dreaming about in front of the Father. But, but even then, uh, there's an element of faith. And I, another thing that's been absorbed is um, probably Bob, uh, between Bob and Rosemary, you know, you know, they've been very influential and just prayer-wise. But, you know, often when I'll pray, I'll say, Lord, thank you that these prayers that we're praying aren't just bouncing off the ceiling and coming mm-hmm. back down. So, and, and that's like almost... Um, uh, you know, it become, you could say that in a trite way, but what that's actually saying is that I'm confessing <laughs> that I start to think that I'm right. that this isn't going to do anything, but then I'm I'm also stating in an act of faith, yes, this is going to do something. Like, um, that uh, God is ordained. It's that this both is sides work. of confession. Yeah, I yeah. confess that my heart isn't in it, but I also confess that you my heart say is this, in it. And, and, and also that you're going to do something with this prayer and that this prayer is going to change something um, in, in your kingdom and that, that's the way things work. I think sometimes when we don't pray, it can be because we, we don't think we don't need help or we're not mm. in a situation where we feel powerless enough. Mm. So sometimes if you live overseas, we're actually the ones that are blessed because we're totally in a place where it's like, oh my word, this is impossible unless God's at work or he right. changes right. hearts mm-hmm. or we're able to love someone that's so different than us. Mm-hmm. So in some ways, we're, we're actually really lucky because we're often at a place where unless God works, um, nothing's going to happen. So this is really interesting to me. Well, two things. I want to dissect what you're t- talking about in terms of prayer, but I, and I want to dissect what you're talking about in terms of desperation. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. because there's there's a clear uh, recognition that I can't do this, and um, 
you you kind of were just quoting Rosemary right there from our, the interview that I had with her. She said, the only prayer is driven by desperation. So if you're not in a place of desperation, you're not going to pray. Uh, right. So, but you're also talking about an honesty. And, and, and we think that there's this tendency to want to not be so honest, but we'll, our, our lack of a desire to pray, we'll just shove that under the rug mm. and never really pray. Mm. But what you're saying is, no, my first prayer is going to be, Lord, I don't want to, I don't really feel like praying. Yeah. You know, and that's the first prayer. You know? I don't feel like it. And I don't really know how to do this. Yeah. And I don't believe I don't, and when I do, I don't yeah. believe anything's going right. to happen, really. Right, right, <laughs> right. What does that say? What does that say so, about what you really believe in? <laughs> but so, so our, our Heavenly Father is so magnificent and what Jesus has done, the victory of God in His death and resurrection is so magnificent that those honest prayers mm-hmm. are legitimate, you know. They are a wonderful place to start and because the immediate response is grace. Mm-hmm. It's a prayer of confession, mm-hmm. and, and God goes, that's a great place to start. Mm-hmm. Thank you for directing those prayers mm-hmm. to the only one who can do anything about it. And then there's this, it starts to change your heart to where, just like what you were describing, where you go, oh, man, I can't believe I can pray this prayer to my Heavenly Father. And then now your heart is soft, and then suddenly you find yourself dreaming in His yeah. lap about the kingdom. I think also it has to do with how God changes you when you actually come into his presence. Mm-hmm. Right? You, sometimes you experience a peace. Mm-hmm. I know that. When, when I don't have that peace, I run at a frenetic pace trying to accomplish all these things or trying to acquire all these things that I think somehow are going to fill this gap in my life. But no, actually when I slow down and I'm like, Jesus, I really need you. And then you experience that that peace in your soul it's like oh wait a minute i don't need all those other things can fade in the background because you experience that communion with the father which is what he actually he made us for okay so let's go back to desperation because that's what you're talking about yeah right jim i wish i could give you more specifics but honestly i just can i just praise god for a little bit something in the last couple months that just happened and i was i thought this God, this is just grieving my heart. I think it's really grieving your heart. And I thought something has to change. And I thought, who can I call? What can I do? I need to go over. I need to sort it out. And I realized if I do all that stuff, it will like hurt a lot of relationships. Mm, mm-hmm. And I could sense the spirit was convicting me. You're trying to do this in your own strength. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I asked a friend, I said, would you join me in just praying, God, what do you think about this situation? Mm. If it really does grieve your heart, I'm going to trust you to, mm. to change it and move in a big way. Mm. But even that prayer felt like an impossible prayer to pray because I couldn't see a way out. The most unlikely things happened, what I could think, right. and it's been sorted. More than you could ask More, or imagine. Well, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Through like even a sense of humor. I was like, oh my word, Jesus, you really have a sense of humor. And I, it's just not fair to give more details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, I was blown away. I was like, oh, yeah, Lord, why don't I do nothing more and just ask you to work? Mm. And then I get to watch you work and then just celebrate how much more amazing you are. Yeah. So honestly, it, it's just, it's really beautiful. And I feel like, wow, I was like, oh, I got to see God's heart. Mm. And that, you know, yeah, he's better than you can imagine. Yeah. And, I, and I love that prayer of Jesus, what do you think about this? Mm. Yeah. You know, because my immediate prayer is directed toward me, Jim, what do we think about this? You know, we in our yeah. lofty high tower, yeah. as we are seat, seated on our throne. Yeah. Jim, what do you think about this? You know, and it never goes well. If that's, it, it's going to go, uh, well, let's lose sleep over this. Mm-hmm. That's the answer to that prayer. Uh, let's be preoccupied. I did lose some sleep over it, actually. Um, <laughs> well, but there is this shift, you know, yeah. where, where it's like, wait a second. Oh, Jesus, what do you think about this? And... Then he goes, I'm going to show you literally more than you could ask or imagine. Yeah. You know. tell, me, tell me how one of the things that I want to emphasize in, uh, in this podcast is one of the things that is part of our DNA, that when the gospel of the kingdom of God renews and 
quickens our spirit and changes us and shows us that we are invited into something bigger. It enables us to go through suffering. It enables us to love people that are difficult to love, the people that, that are just in our close proximity. So, and you had started to talk about this. So talk to me about, a, about how the gospel has taught you to love people the way, like you, you said, the way Jesus loves them. Hmm. You know, a really uh, a wise woman named Kathy Hall, she, she taught me, actually, this is, she taught me this prayer. She said, you know what, Jen, you wake up in the morning, and she said, you know, uh, ask God to show you that he loves you. Mm. Like, put it on him, right? In Psalm 143, it's like, let the, it says, let the morning bring me word of your steadfast love, for I put my hope in you. And before that, it says, otherwise, I'll go down into the pit. Right. So I think it is really organic. You have to ask Jesus, like, show me that you love me. Mm. When I know that God is for me, he sends. Sometimes, you know, and he speaks through all of creation. All of creation sings. Sometimes I see a green parakeet overhead, and I think, oh, Jesus knows I love green parakeets. He sent that just for me. Something like that. And I, I, I mean, honestly, right? Jesus has a sense of humor. Yeah. Um, oh, I love that. Yeah. So God, yeah, yeah, Lord, show me that um, you love me, because if I know that you love me, and help me to see the world you, the way you see it. Give me eyes to see what you see. It helps me, you know, to treat others the way that you treat them. Um, I can kind of give you, I, I just thought of something. I can kind of give you an origin story. How I, how I became part of the company was actually uh, through, through marriage. Because I got married to this uh-huh. dashing uh, young man. <laughs> but I had come, I'd come for a week. I was between jobs in New York. And I had been a student here in London during my university days. And I often, I often think the first actually authentic prayer that I ever prayed was in central London as a student. Hmm. And I did. I walked into a cathedral and thought, I'm in a different country. No one knows I'm here. Uh, the world is beautiful. But God, who are you? Like, what's your name? Hmm. I'm just curious about the world because it looks like it's, it's like you're walking in an art museum that's alive. You know, it's yeah. just so beautiful. And how did it get there? How do we get there? Um, so anyway, that's why I came back to London. And I, you know, I, I was working in the World Trade Center. I was working in IT. I never uh, worked with kids, but the ministry that week was working with kids. We were sleeping on the floor of a church, and it was just really fun. Like, I just loved loving kids that were so different than me. And I really felt like I was trusting God in new ways different than New York. And I had also met Matt, but then I came back to New York City, and I remember I was walking up 42nd Street, and I was telling Jesus, I was like, Lord, I really want you to work in my life the way that I saw you work that past week when I was in London and loving on all these um, kids. And I heard him say, oh, Jen, you want to go do big things for me? Well, how do you do things in the little things? Mm -hmm. You know, he was like, I think sometimes, this is, I felt like in my spirit, he said, sometimes you use New York City. Like, that's the spirit that fills you. You get a buzz out of that. He was like, why don't you, he's like, come to me, come to my Holy Spirit. How do you love, he said, how do you love those I've put in your life? How do you love your neighbors? Mm-hmm. And so I thought, oh, okay, maybe I have to start to love the people next door to me. And wouldn't you know, um, a South Asian woman moved in two weeks later next door to me. And I thought, oh, she's someone different. She doesn't know anybody. Maybe I should start to love her and pursue uh-huh. her. And I actually, I had a real heart for her. I think God gave me a heart for her. And I started inviting her over and spending time with her. And I'm actually, I'm still in touch with her. And that was 23 years ago because of social media. So I don't know. That's just a one little way that, um, yeah, I saw God change my heart. A lot of times I've a lot of times I go, oh, man, I don't want to love this person who's close to me or this person who's in my life or I'm annoyed or they're in my way or all of those things. And that circles back to the prayer thing that you were talking about of this is the honest prayer. Uh, Jesus says, hey, hey, love this person. And I go, yeah, but not that person. And that's the, and that's the beginning of a conversation with Jesus that is just brutally honest and it's but it's liberating that that I worship a god we worship a god who says 
I already know your heart. I already know that, that you said, Lord, I want to love my neighbor. And I already know that when I gave you the neighbor to love, that your heart was going to be uh, recalcitrant toward that, that uh, opportunity. Mm-hmm. And I already knew that. And it's not surprising to me. And I already knew that you were going to say, I don't want to love that person. And then the Lord says, okay, let's keep talking about that. And, and your story is, and the Lord gave me a heart of love yeah. toward that person. And that's a miracle. When... We wake up in the morning, and the idea is, how can I defend my reputation? How can I defend my standing in this world? How can I defend my uh, a meaning in life? What, you know, what, what, if, what is it about me that I'm having to demonstrate to the world to prove my existence? Um, and when it's so self-focused, yeah. it's all about you. Yeah, and when the kingdom of God, when Jesus sweeps you up into his kingdom and goes, hey, I'm going to free you from having to think about those things. Mm. And you go, well, well, so then what do I think about? He goes, love other people. Yeah. yeah. Love me. You know, I think sometimes when we go back to America and sometimes we have people that wonderfully have given so much to support us in churches, you know, sometimes we feel that Were these people doing ministry? We're up on this pedestal. Oh, I can never do what you do. And sometimes I think, oh, no, I'm just like you. I'm just like you. I'm no different. But I do. I see it so often that the world is so busy. It's like such a busy culture that actually it's really easy. Sometimes you just have to say, Lord, I'm going to be available to you. Like even this next hour. Like I can tell you that's how I live my life here. Okay, Lord. Jesus, what do you want me to do? You know, just two weeks ago, all these wrong things happened and I had to take my kid someplace because she forgot her, some part of her instrument. And so we were like, oh my gosh, we're gonna be late to school. And then all of a sudden the traffic was parted. I felt like actually, I felt like I was in like Evan Almighty, where it's like, but I was like, oh wait, God, you're in this, you're in this. Why am I here? I'm not supposed to be here. What do you want me to do? Jesus, show me. Okay, I've got extra time. And next thing I know, I was like, oh, there's, I should turn down this street. Okay, I'll turn down this street. Oh, look, there's a parking space. Oh, okay, I'll park here. Lord, I don't know why I'm parking here, but I'm, I'm just going to be available to you. I ended up r- seeing a friend that I've been praying for. Hmm. She was like right outside her house. The moment that I walked by her house, not even trying to get there. And in that moment, I was like, okay, Lord, you're here and you love her. And then that's really wonderful because I feel like I do get to partner in what God's already doing. You know, we took a walk and I got to pray for her. Then I think sometimes when you do pray, you can bring people into the presence of God yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah. You know, and often I think a lot of people that don't know Christ, when you pray for them, they have some kind of emotional response that they're not even expecting, but maybe it's because they're coming into God's presence. So actually, I think prayer can be really great evangelism. Oh, absolutely. Um, but also, I got off the topic. So really, what I, what I, I feel like, oh, what I want to tell people is just, you know, be available to Christ. And maybe we all need to slow down. Maybe we, even in prayer, we just need yeah. to be silent. It's not just us talking to God, but slowing down enough to listen to Him and letting Him fill you. And then just seeing where it goes. If I have an imagination for how Jesus could be with me as I'm driving and that Jesus could guide my steps, if I have an imagination for that, who knows what could happen? You know, the the beauty of it is it doesn't matter. Um, If this is where the Lord wants to lead, then I'm taken care of. You know, my agenda, which is normally my self preoccupation, that's my agenda forgetting the instrument or whatever it was. Um, this is my agenda, and my objective is this. You know, and Jesus goes, those things are going to work themselves out. And I go, how do you know? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know um, which even that is prayer because it's directed toward the Lord. And there's a humility with that where it's like, okay, this is my agenda, but what do you want? You know, Jesus, what do you want? It's true. Like it says, offer your bodies as living sacrifices. But it is hard because we do want to be in the center or sometimes I think, oh, I know best. And then I've seen all the collateral damage I can cause when I don't know best or I don't ask people questions and I just make assumptions. 
And there's such a grace that the Lord shows us those things, you know, in a tender way. For me, it's always some sort of humiliating thing that happens. And I'm like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. And as I work through that, it turns into this humbling thing. And so every humiliation <laughs> turns into this humbling thing where I kind of, at the end of it, I laugh and go, okay, uh, right. It's because I thought I was amazing. And Jesus is like, now you know that you're not as amazing as you thought. You're welcome. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I was thinking just about the, I don't know if we're talking too much about prayer, but, um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think we're, we're just so individualistic. And I think that as I think about praying, I almost never think about praying just by myself. Mm. Like there's something about praying corporately with other people where I'm, I'm listening to them pray about God's heart for other things. And that's rebuking me and drawing me out of my self absorption, but it's also helping me, um, encourage me that, yeah, I can pray about those things too. Um, so I think there's a corporate aspect uh, to learning how to pray and also, you know, all of these believing that, you know, when you see somebody praying who is really aware of God's love for them in that moment or just that, that's, that's drawing you into God's love mm -hmm. for you. That's right. So I think that's another, another piece, a piece to this. Um, and also I think having long enough chunks of time in a corporate prayer time where you kind of get beyond the initial, it's almost like you kind of have to thaw out and then you sort of enter into prayer. I know uh, I learned later that, that Jack talked about those things when he was talking about prayer, there's prayer and then there's, there's like prayer and, and, and not that it's like uh a secret higher life kind of thing, not, not super amazing not, people, not that at all, but just that you're, 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 you're sitting together corporately in God's presence long enough to kind of get beyond yourself. Mm, right. <laughs> I right. think that's what, and that wait, are you guys and, feeling like we should pray since uh, we're just yeah, talking probably, about it? No. I was thinking that, yeah, it's so <laughs> funny. Uh, but I, I've experienced that. Mm. Like I, I think the first time I heard somebody talk about that, I'd already experienced that before so I, I believed what they were saying you know another thing is I th because we get to live cross-culturally and we get to rub shoulders with people from other cultures and from other faith backgrounds that have met Jesus and exactly what Matt was saying you get to hear their prayers mm -hmm. but also know the sacrifice that they have given up yeah to follow him mm -hmm. be it I was made homeless by my family or I brought shame on my family. You know, right, those things right. that I think, wow. Mm -hmm. Not even on your radar at a gut level. Yes. And you're, you're in yes. front of someone who at a very visceral, real level, mm -hmm. this is a significant thing. Yeah. I think, oh, wow, it's really, it's worth it. I mean, I think we're the lucky ones. <laughs> So it, it, sometimes, it, oh yes, how do we, how do we, how do we get here? Yeah, that's yeah. what Lindsay said. Really? Yeah, that she's honored. Yeah, yeah. Like there's how, an honor. Yeah, why would you yeah, call me? True. Why would you call me? You see my heart, and yet you're still pleased to use me. Okay, why should I say no? How can I? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And we're not just saying that. Like <laughs> that, <laughs> I think we really believe that it really is a privilege and an honor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Should we just stop and pray for a few minutes and then well, we'll finish? I, well, I think or, I mean, that, or anything I, I else think, we need to talk well, about. Well, I think that we should end, end this in prayer. We, okay. You can't, yeah, you're right. You can't talk about prayer yeah. and not that, pray. Yeah. So, so let's pray. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, Father, yeah, I just thank you for your presence. God, thank you that when we, we don't even just have to talk about prayer, Lord, that we can just come to you and um, ask that you would fill us afresh. Mm. God, that we would know your peace, Father, that the world, mm. this world with all of its chaos um, and busyness and heaviness and brokenness, Lord, 
Father, that it would be laid aside and um, we could rest and be filled with you, Father, that we would experience your shalom, Lord. And we, ju- we just ask, Lord, we don't know um, what to say or even um, how to describe just a beautiful relationship with you, Father. But thank you that you, yeah, you really know us. You invite us. You cover us. Lord, you want to change us and transform us, Lord, and you want to satisfy the weary soul with good things. Lord, you want to lift the poor um, out of the ash heap and seat them with princes. And Lord, it really sounds like that story feels too good to be true. Um, But it really is. And so, yeah, keep us us from um, putting ourselves in the driver's seat. Mm. And Lord, would you use... Mm. um, would you use Jim and what he and the vision that he has? God, would it be your vision? Lord, would you encourage, mm. um, use us to, to, you know, mutually encourage one another? Mm. And Lord, give us integrity. Pray that our children would know your righteousness and mm. your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus, I thank you for these friends and this uh, wonderful time to get to share our lives in front of you, with you. So thank you that you are here. Uh, Thank you for your spirit. Um, Continue to make us humble. Continue to make us desperate for you. Continue to guide our steps and give us an, an awareness that you are guiding our steps. Because we want to go where you go. We want to do what you want us to do. We want to think the way you think. So show us these things. Um, Yeah, I pray that you would bless Matt and Jen in ways beyond what they can ask or imagine and give them them a satisfaction in your faithfulness um, that that is overwhelming with, with a realization of your love and your... Uh, your goodness and your control in in all the and all the things that they they find themselves a part of uh, the people that they lead um, you know, the situations that they find themselves in the suffering that they go through with in, either in their life or in the lives of the people around them uh, so give them the ability to love the way you love and and we want to just look and celebrate those things. Mm-hmm. And so we celebrate now, knowing that you are, you are doing great things now, and you are going to continue to do great things. So give us faith to see those things. Give us, give us faith uh, so that we're not, we're not cynical, uh, but that we actually celebrate. Um, yeah, so give us such a joy, we pray in your name. Father, I, I, want, I want to pray for this project that Jim's doing. Um, mm-hmm. Lord, I pray that you would use it for your glory. Um, um, I pray that you would just be... Uh, thank you that you use us in, in our weakness, Lord. Uh, I'm feeling the, the reality of the cameras this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, just a weird thing. So thank you for your love for us this morning. Um, uh, I pray, Lord, that you would increase even as we decrease. Um, I pray that you give them real wisdom in the editing. and um, Father, that this really wouldn't really be about surge. It wouldn't be about an organization, but mm-hmm. it really would be about you and that people would be encouraged to pray mm-hmm. and encouraged that you love them and Um, Lord, we need those things today. I need those things today. Um, I think there's things that I can see around me that I just don't believe that you can change. So I confess my unbelief, but yet, Lord, I know that you can, you can change them. So Lord, I pray that you would make things new, that you would honor your promises. Um, I pray for those that, that don't know you, that you would, um, open their eyes to, to see you, Jesus. Um, I pray for my own heart, Lord. I pray uh, uh, that you you give us grace for today. Um, And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
how could we end that conversation about prayer any other way than to pray? And if there is one takeaway that I want you to have, it's that prayer is way easier than we often think. And that's because we have a God who loves us way more than we realize. So as you go, go in that freedom, the freedom and joy of a God who loves you and blesses you. So may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to smile down on you. May the Lord be gracious to you and turn his bright eyes to you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, life everlasting. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.